This is an update on the Ravel 148 scale Apollo spacecraft. In a previous video, I described on how I was going to make a repair to the hatch hinge mechanism um, because those little plastic pins just weren't fitting in the um, molded openings properly, causing the hatch to fall into the command module cockpit. So I wanted to show you the finished product on that. It took some time and some MacGyvering to make this work. It wasn't as, as straightforward as I thought, but it actually did turn out pretty good. I'm going to just kind of rotate this over here so you can see it. There you go. That is the paperclip hinge that I created. There were a lot of steps in the process to make this work, I'll tell you that. It wasn't easy. Um, and again, I wouldn't recommend this as a way of retrofitting this, this hatch hinge just to do it. I did this because um, the pins didn't work. They, were, they failed to open and close the hatch properly, so I had to come up with, a, with another plan. Um, but it worked out great. It really did. The hatch closes. Looks good. The hatch is, is flush with the contour of the, uh, of the outer shell of the command module. What I did have to do, though, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on this, is where the, um, where the paper clip hinge goes into the back side of the CM, um, right up in this area here, I had to actually cut an opening into the outer shell and then lay the paper clip hinge into it, then cover the hinge with a very thin piece of uh, styrene plastic in which then I lay a thin layer of tester cement over the top of that to hold that piece of plastic in place and then I puttied over it and sanded it and it's going to get another skim coat of putty before I actually finish it. That enabled that hinge to actually rotate in its own little socket otherwise the hinge would be glued into the CM outer hull and you couldn't open the hatch. But it works out pretty good. The hatch doesn't swing fully. Well, it does swing fully open, but I'm not going to, for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to do that because um, it will probably just snap off and I'll be bummed. So I'm going to leave it open just like that. I'm going to rotate it over again so you can see what that looks like on the inside. Maybe a little closer up like this. See how that looks. And I'm going to turn it just a bit this way here. There. Okay. Again, don't recommend doing this unless your pins are broken and you don't have any other way to make that work. Um, there's more involved in it than what I'm going to describe here, but suffice to say that it involved a bit of MacGyvering to get this to, to, to look good. But it looks good, and I'm happy with, with the outcome. So now I can actually proceed and finish the command module portion of this, and the uh, service module is, is in works, as you can see in the background. That's uh, painted up, um, looks fairly decent right here. Um, basically went with the colors that were uh, identified in the kit. Um, not looking for authenticity, if you will, just wanting to make it look like a nice display piece. So it's turning into that. Going to do the bulkheads now in their various, you know, green, zinc, chromate or whatever. Whatever color that is, I have to do a little research. Um, but yeah, that's turned out pretty decent. The Shapeways uh, BPC and Launch Escape Tower. Um, the tower has a texture to it, just like the um, the BPC does. Um, it's from the 3D printing process, so it's kind of like a really fine ribbed texture, and you got to put either a bunch of bunch of coats of paint on it and sand it down to get a smooth fit, or Someone said that that Mr. Hobby makes a a some kind of a putty spray, although I've never seen it that you can actually you know spray on. I don't know that that's true, but I'm just using uh, primer. Um, the reason why on this is because there's a section here that glues onto the main section. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it's because of the constraints of the size of the 3D printer. But it leaves a little line here, and it's it's you can feel it. You can't feel the relief, but you can see it. So. I'm thinking there must be a, just a bit of a micro uh, depression in there that's causing that relief, that, 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 that little bit of a gap to show. So I may have to go over it with some Mr. Hobby's Dissolve Putty and sand it down again. But you can, I don't know if, if you can see it in the image here, 
or not, but there is a texture to that, except where I sanded it here and did a lot of uh, filling. It looks smoother, and then there's a more textured surface here. Um, that's, how it, that's how these parts look 3D printed. You can get them really smooth looking um, by ordering it in a different kind of plastic, but you'll pay a, a lot of money for those parts then, you know, upwards to, you know, a couple hundred bucks if you want to spend that kind of money. I don't. Um, I'm pretty happy with this uh, with this 3D printed part. So put that back there. The, uh, the BPC is actually fairly smooth now. I sanded, put a lot of coats of paint on it and sanded it down. So I'm going to put a couple of top coats on it and we'll be good to go on that. But it, uh, it turned out really nice. So anyhow, that's my update.